Here on T-Rex Labs, we usually talk about technology and hard skills, but today we're gonna to talk about the why. Now, in order to talk about the why, we're gonna get a little bit philosophical, but this is still T-Rex Labs, and we still like science, so we're gonna see what our favorite neighborhood science guy is up to. Here's an entropy demonstration. We got blue beads and white beads. We shake them up and we see what happens. The white beads float. The blue beads sink. The white beads are less dense than the blue beads. Fine, but wait. The white beads are sinking now and the blue beads are floating. Order is emerging from disorder. Entropy is going away. Time is running backwards. Dogs are living with cats and so on. But you know, this is some Bill Nye science guy trick or demonstration. You know the beads do not have minds of their own and they're choosing to float or sink. You know that. And so overcome any superstition, except that things are not always as they appear. So how did this happen? How did order come from disorder? Did a pond freeze in the summertime? This is a science teacher's discrepant event. This is something unexpected. Now, that clip is actually the whole reason that I wanted to make this video. And Bill Nye is pretty good at finding really good visual representations of things so that he can explain complicated concepts. But in this case, he's actually being more confusing than illustrative. Now, fortunately, I have the exact same thing. So since he didn't explain how it actually works, I will. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. How exactly is it that order comes out of chaos? Well, it's pretty complicated. As he pointed out, there's different densities for the different beads, but there's also two separate liquids here. Somebody had to very carefully develop exactly the right formula, both for making these beads so that they exist at different densities, but also exactly the right mixture of salt water, which is now sinking to the very bottom because it's heavier than the blue beads, and isopropyl alcohol, which is now floating to the top because it's lighter than the white beads. This has to be very carefully balanced, uh, even though this is just a simple pot bottle and not as fancy as the art-directed cylinder that uh, was made for Bill Nye. This is the exact same materials, and therefore it's behaving in exactly the same way. So the short answer is, how does order come out of chaos? The same way order always comes out of chaos a lot of design and a lot of work, which he doesn't really go into in the clip. That being said, he does say something that I completely agree with. This is something unexpected. And when the unexpected happens, that's an opportunity for learning, for engagement. If you're wandering through the woods, you might not expect to find a boat just in the middle of nowhere. And not just one boat, but an entire graveyard of boats. Here's why these boats are here. Not that many years ago, there was a larger community on this side of the Duck River. People used the Duck River for recreation and fishing, and they rented boats, and they brought boats here to be repaired by the gentleman that lived in that house. And when he passed away, everything just sat where it was. His widow uh, explained the story to me. Now, when she passed away just a few years ago, uh, you can see that really nothing has happened. Nothing has changed. Everything is just sitting here, kind of rotting away. Not just these boats, but the business that used to be here, the house that they used to live in, all of these things that represent a community, the memories, the assets of the community are just kind of disintegrating, and the people who took care of them are gone. That, I think, makes a much better object lesson and visual picture of entropy than the carefully designed bottle. Uh, but let's let Bill Nye take one more shot at uh, explaining the second law of thermodynamics. And the second law of thermodynamics basically is where you lose uh, energy to heat. And that difference can be assessed scientifically or mathematically with this word entropy, this disorder of molecules. Uh, but the fundamental thing that this questioner has missed is the Earth is not a closed system. So there's energy pouring in here from the sun, if I may, day and night, because <laughs> the night it's pouring in on the other side. And so that energy is what drives living things on Earth, especially uh, for, in our case, plants. 
And that is an excellent point. The sun, even though it's 90 million miles away, which I learned from Bill Nye, is beating down tons of energy, photons, and heat on this planet. The fact of the matter is, only certain things can really take advantage of it. This wood is alive. It's able to take those photons, and it's able to take the nutrients, and turn those into order by doing work. But the dead wood is decaying. It's rotting away. There is no amount of energy that you can put into the wood of this boat that will stop it from rotting away. In fact, the more heat and the more light you put on this boat, the faster it is disintegrating. And I think that there's more to this illustration of entropy than just microbes and molecules, because there's also a concept that I wanna talk about called moral entropy. There is gravity pulling us down. There is everything breaking down and rusting and falling apart when left to its own devices. And then there's you. I know that you are somewhat lazy, like everybody. You are watching this video instead of taking care of boats like this. Uh, but it takes a huge amount of work to actually maintain some of this stuff. It can't just be left alone. And you have to work on yourself. You need to maintain your own health and your own body, and you need to work to learn stuff so that you can continue to grow in your capabilities. Everything is pulling you down, and it takes effort to take it back. Now, this is a topic that we talk about on the T-Rex podcast quite a bit, uh, but it's also a concept that we talk about just across all of the T-Rex media and in T-Rex arms itself. We want to improve on our hard skills. We want to improve on our capabilities. We even want to improve the products that we make in the shop and the way that we make them. And all of that takes work and it takes energy and it takes design. You have to work to beat entropy, and you have your work cut out for you. Now, as you have probably guessed, I take a lot of my understanding of moral entropy uh, from the Bible. I believe that God has built the order that is here and that it didn't come out of nothing, that he put that energy source 90 million miles away and he has designed these plants to be able to grow. You can see that the plants around here, they are not resting or giving up. They are working. They're fighting against gravity by growing up. They're fighting against entropy by creating order out of the dirt. And that means that this system actually gives us second chances. Now these boats, uh, they're not really salvageable, but you can see that trees are literally growing out of the ruins, which means that in 10 or 20 years, even though these boats will be gone, there will be a new forest here. My kids can cut those trees down, turn them into lumber, and build new boats basically from scratch, which will be very hard work. It'll take a huge amount of design effort. It will take a huge amount of uh, discipline. Uh, it will take skills that will not be easy to learn. It would be easier if we had a boat factory. You know, we used to have a boat factory over on High 100, but it's been maintained about as well as these boats have. If we hadn't lost the boat factory, it would be easier for us to make the boats. If we hadn't lost the boats, we'd be a lot closer to where we would like to be. But I got an idea. If we, say, started a smaller factory, uh, made something a little bit simpler than boats. We could gain manufacturing skills, we could hire people and train them skills, we could develop some of the disciplines that are necessary, probably starting out with something small, something not as complicated as a boat, maybe a little holster. Uh, and then we could learn lessons and put them on video so that other people could learn them too. That's probably a good, like, first step. Um, I'll add it to my to-do list. So I guess the takeaway is actually really obvious. Uh, you can lose things faster than you think. It doesn't take long before you've lost boats, uh, boat factories, houses, uh, even communities. And you have to put in work to stop that from happening. In T-Rex, we're all about preserving life, but also preserving the things that preserve life. So, the recommendation here is to not just sit and do nothing, hoping that things get better, because they don't, that's not normal. This is normal. This is what happens when you do nothing. So continue to learn those hard skills and those soft skills, continue to build those disciplines and continue to do the work.
Entropy happens fast. Uh, I actually helped clean out this boat repair shop almost exactly 10 years ago, and things have fallen off a bit uh, since then. And Bill Nye is actually a pretty good example of that. He used to have an amazing show, and now he kind of is just pushing a narrative. Bill Nye, the attendant guy. Bill Nye, the attendant guy. Must be suffering. Bill Nye, the attendant guy. Social engineering rules. Bill, 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 Bill. Sure, this might make things confusing for those who insist everyone pick an M or an F. But people, we have to listen to the science. And the science says we're all on a spectrum. Some people are gay, some are bi, some are asexual, and some will take whatever they can get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Disgusting! Bill Nye, the science guy. But let's go back. Oh man, it's 25 years now. Does the old show really hold up, or is it just my nostalgia talking? Is the science any good? See, inside each of our cells are these things called chromosomes and they control whether we become a boy or a girl. See, there are only two possibilities. X, X, a girl, or X, Y, a boy. That show was probably super formative to me and uh, other people who are making T-Rex arms content. The way that ideas could be simplified to the point where complicated stuff was understandable and some of the visual storytelling and graphics, yeah, not so much the sound effects, but, I bet there's a whole bunch of stuff from that show in the way that we think about creating content today. So, that Seattle production team did a phenomenal job, and thank you, Bill Nye. I appreciate it.